Hey guys, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. If you haven't already done so, make sure you join the Discord. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description down below. In the Discord, you'll get the opportunity to chat directly with me. And if you run into a serious problem, I can jump in a call with you and we can get everything sorted out. If you don't happen to catch me because of time zone differences or whatever, there's plenty of other members in there that are fully capable and willing to help you out as well. If you feel like helping out the channel a little bit, you just want to throw some support my way so that I can keep bringing you guys some quality content, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash SRT Bull. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description as well. All right, let's get into today's video. All right, today I'm going to show you a way that you can make it so that a player on your server can go into the slash kits GUI and they can actually claim a pre-built base. In order to make this work on your server, you have to be comfortable with two main plugins. I've done tutorials on both of those plugins. One of them is kits and the other one is copy paste. I'm going to put links to both of those videos in the YouTube card in the top right hand corner. Make sure you're confident that you know how to run both of those plugins before you attempt to do this. It'll make this project go so much smoother for you as long as you have a good understanding of how kits and copy paste both work. In a previous video, you watched me build and create a paste of a starter base that we're actually going to use on this tutorial. If you don't remember, the base looks just like this. This is the base that we created for the copy and paste plugin. And this is the base that we're going to use so the player can actually claim this base. But for now, we don't need this. So that's the copy paste aspect of things. The other aspect or the other plugin that you need to be comfortable with is the kits plugin. And again, if you haven't dealt with any of the kits stuff yet, make sure you go and do that first before you try attempting any of this. This won't make any sense if you haven't done that. The first thing that we need to do is basically start a new kit. Now, even though this isn't a kit that's actually going to give our player any items into their inventory, we still have to follow the same processes. So we're just going to do slash kit add and then whatever the name of this kit that we want to call it. In this case, we're just going to call this base. In fact, no, I'm going to call this kit starter base. Now the plugin is asking us for some other tags. So the tag that we need to use here in order to attach this kit to an actual paste file from copy paste, the tag that we're going to use is building and it looks just like that. And then we need to put the file name exactly as we did it before when we were using the copy paste plugin. So in this case, this file name is base two and that looks just like that. So building is now set to base two. Now all of your other kits tags are still available. They still work the exact same way. You can still add maxes. You can still add a cooldown. You can still add an off level, all that stuff. The only other thing that I'm going to do on this particular kit is add a description. So by doing slash kit description and then in quotes, I'm going to add a simple description. In this case, it just says a simple starter base for you to store your loot in. There we go. A description set to a simple starter base for you to store some loot. Okay, and as an admin, we are now able to pull up the kits GUI and we can add this kit. And the only one that we have available to add is the starter base. And there we go. Now we have VIP level one, two, and three, as well as our starter base. Now you might be wondering why it says no image here. And I'll show you that in just one second. As you can see, I've added these VIP images here just so that I can show you that it can be done. So right here, I don't like that it says no image found. Let's go to the actual kits data file and I'll show you how to add that image in there. Here we are at the actual kits data file showing all of the information that is in each one of the kits that we've built. So let's just hop on Google real quick and I'm just going to grab an image on just any image and I'm going to show you how to add this into your kit so that it actually displays on your GUI. All right, so this guy right here is actually a PNG and it has a transparent background, so it's actually going to work pretty good. So I'm just going to copy this image address close this out and I'm going to go back into the image section. I'm going to put this in quotations and then I'm just going to pasta that in there just like that. So now it says image and then the address that we copied from Google. So now all we got to do is save this file, reload the plugin, and then we can hop back in game and I'll show you that this works. There's actually one other thing that I want to change before we go back in game. So I'm going to show you. So this is what I changed right here. I just made this look so that it's grammatically correct. So there's actual capital letters and a space in there. It doesn't look so rookie. So I'm going to save and reload this plugin and you'll see the change that it made once we get into the GUI. O dot reload kit. All right. So now that we're back in game, we can just pull up our GUI again, slash kit. 
All right, so there you go. So now we've got our icon in there, exactly like the one that we pulled from Google. This is the grammatical correction that I made right here. I capitalized the S on starter and the B on base. It just makes it look a little bit better. Instead of having these lowercase generic names that kind of actually look like programming names, which that's exactly what they are, it just makes it give a better appearance, a little bit more polished. It really takes your GUI to the next level and lets your players know that you actually really care about the tiny details involved in every single plugin. Okay, so let's actually make sure that this kit is working the way that we intend it to. So let's bring up our GUI slash kit. And I'm just going to click on this black redeem button right here. And there we go. It pasted the base. And it is sitting above ground the way that we want it to. That's perfect. And there's stuff in the TC, which is what we want. That's perfect. And there we go. We have now created a kit that allows a player to spawn in their own base. And then, of course, we would just have to go through and put in our code locks and we're all set. As promised, I'd show you exactly how you can make a kit so that a player can claim a base. And you can absolutely make these bases whatever you want. I just use a really generic design right here just for simplicity reasons and speed reasons for video purposes. But you can literally give the ability for a player to spawn whatever they want. I'm actually, while we're talking about that though, I'm actually going to show you one really quick thing you as the administrator of your own server need to watch out for. With what we've now created, we do have the ability of this happening right here. So as you can see, I'm at the launch site and I've just claimed another kit base and look where it is. It is literally right in the middle of the launch site. Now, obviously this isn't something that we want. However, at this point, because of the plugin limitations, there's no way to prevent this from happening. So if you see one of your players complaining that, hey, there's a base where there shouldn't be a base, then you just have to go in and slash remove that entire base. So if we go in and click the magic button, all of a sudden the base is gone and all of the players loot is gone as well. So you can actually make this a part of your rules. If you want to tell your players right up front, hey, don't claim your base in the middle of another monument. Don't claim your base somewhere where it's going to interfere with another player's base of any kind, whether that's spawned or actually built. With the caution that goes with it saying, hey, if, you, if I catch you doing this, I'm just going to simply remove your base and you will have lost everything. It is something that I've been in contact with the developer about. I haven't heard back from them yet. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But we need to have a check in place so that you can't actually claim these bases inside of monuments. But for right now, it just comes down to a monitoring thing. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. I hope everyone is staying happy and healthy and avoiding whatever contact you can with this whole pandemic, whatever you want to call it. I call it the apocalypse, but I say it jokingly. If you want to check out more videos from the same playlist, make sure you click on one of the links on the right hand side right now. There's a ton of tutorials out there, tons of information, lots of stuff for you guys to learn. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next Friday.